What is the third eye? And is the practice of opening it demonic or is it biblical? What is the difference between clairvoyance and prophecy? First of all, the exact literal term of the third eye is not found anywhere in the Bible. The term is used in three primary religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism. Although spiritual vision is often mentioned in scripture, we have to be careful with not tipping the scales and going over into unsanctioned practices as believers and followers of Jesus. The third eye is also called the mind's eye or the inner eye. And this is what it says about it online. It's a mystical, invisible eye, usually depicted as located on the forehead, which provides perception beyond ordinary sight. In Hinduism, the third eye refers to the Aina chakra. In both Hinduism and Buddhism, the third eye is said to be located in the middle of the forehead, slightly above the junction of the eyebrows, representing the enlightenment one achieves through meditation. The third eye refers to the gate that leads to the inner realms and spaces of higher consciousness. In spirituality and new age, the third eye often symbolizes a state of enlightenment. The third eye is often associated with religious visions and clairvoyance, the ability to observe chakras and auras, precognition and out-of-body experiences. In an article published in February of 2023 by Alexandra Theodar on a New Age Spirituality website, she says people whose third eye has opened are known as seers due to the fact that they are able to see the subtle plans of reality, observing auras, chakras, and spiritual entities around us. The third eye governs certain organs such as the pineal gland, the base of the brain, and third ventricle. And it also facilitates spiritual insights and the distribution of divine energy, also called prana, in the other parts of the body. It is said that an open third eye will make the person wiser and more in tune with the universe's plan, as well as increase intuition, telepathic, and psychic abilities. But how do you know if your third eye is open? I'm still quoting the article here, okay, guys? I'm not for, I'm not here to promote a third eye. I'm just clearly stating what people who practice this say about it. The third eye usually opens when the person is ready to step into his or her spiritual path. And the universe has a plan for this moment. There are some, these are some of the signs that your third eye is ready to open, according to Theodore. A feeling of slight pressure between the eyebrows, frequent headaches, increased intuition, you acquire telepathic abilities, you become clairvoyant, frequent lucid and vivid dreams, you become more conscious of what you are eating and the energies therein, you start noticing all the synchronicities in your life, increased light and sound sensitivity, seeing lights, geometric shapes and patterns when your eyes are closed and seeking a higher life purpose. End of quote. Now listen, guys. This can, of course, sound very similar to prophetic insight. Many of these things are what prophets claim to experience when they are having revelations, when they go into trances, when they're having prophetic dreams and having a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, even discernment of spirits and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. But it is not to be mistaken with any of that. Yes, the Bible says clearly that we have spiritual vision, we have spiritual eyes, and Elisha even asked to open the spiritual eyes of his servant in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17 to 20. It says, Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. 
As the enemy came down toward them, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness and so on and so forth. Take note that Elisha never asked for the third eye of his servant to be opened, but for his spiritual eyes, for his spiritual vision, for his spiritual understanding to be open. Also, as Christians, we know that it is possible by demonic powers to achieve results that are counterfeit and may seem similar to what God has done, although it normally comes in a weaker form. Example is when Moses performed miracles before Pharaoh in Exodus 7. The difference was always that God's miracle was permanent. It was superior and it was done in the name of God. So that someone can perform a miracle, it doesn't mean that they are immediately of God. I want to highlight point number five of the article of the symptoms that you made your uh, quote-unquote third eye has opened. And it says clairvoyance. Now listen to this, what clairvoyance really is. Even though history is replete with examples of the universal human desire to know what lies be beyond the limitation of the five senses, you don't have to look any further than common human experience. The longing to reach beyond the boundaries of our creatureliness seems to be woven into the fabric of human thinking. But God imposed limitations on us for a reason. He made us to be dependent on him. The five senses he gave to us are to enable us to see clearly. And what are we meant to see? His eternal power and divine nature through what has been made. Romans 1 verse 20. If we want knowledge beyond what our senses can tell us, and most of us certainly do, we are to seek that information from God and from God alone. The Holy Spirit alone has written the revelation of God in the Bible. Clairvoyants, psychics, and occult practitioners have no part in conveying the revelation of God. All they can provide is a cheap and damning counterfeit. Now, the biblical term for someone who practices clairvoyancy is a medium or a spiritist. A medium was someone who spoke to dead people, and a spiritist was someone who spoke to spirits. So clairvoyancy is when you have spiritual perception without the Holy Spirit. You access the spiritual world to be able to foresee spiritual things that happen th without the Holy Spirit. The spirit world is all around us. The spiritual realm is all around us at all times. And we as Christians can access this through the Holy Spirit under the direction, under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit. And other people can too through demonic spirits. The problem is that they have to pay a price for it. Because Jesus already paid the price and because Jesus instructs us on when to see into the spirit world, he gives us access for free. But anyone who accesses the spiritual world outside of the Holy Spirit has to pay a price. Many times those people are struggling with sickness and they die prematurely in their life. So that is a sign to see. that those people. And the difference is also, remember in Exodus 7, the miracles happened, but the, the snake that from Aaron's staff consumed the other snakes. That means that the, the miracles of Jesus, the miracles that are performed in the name of Jesus all always have superiority over other types of signs and wonders that are done by demonic spirits. Also, also to remember is that people who can see into the spirit world by demonic spirits can actually not make any changes. They can only see, they can't change things. Only people who operate under the authority of the Holy Spirit have the power to change things in the spirit world. And remember, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, mediums and spiritists are abominations before the Lord. So how can we determine if someone is operating as a seer in new age by other spirits than the Holy Spirit? I tell people to not just trust their feeling regarding these things, but to trust scripture. Number one, what does the Bible say? Are there instances in the Bible that clearly defines what a person is doing 
to be unbiblical and unsanctioned practices, that's the number one red flag. Number two is the name of Jesus getting all the glory. If someone or something else than Jesus is being glorified, this may be a sign of clairvoyance rather than spiritual insight under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And number three, what is the fruit? Are people's lives being transformed? Are salvations happening and do we see permanent fruit in people's life? We have to understand that if someone claims to prophesy in the name of Jesus and everything they say and do points towards Jesus, they are not operating under clairvoyancy. Yes, they may be carnal in nature, and we have carnal prophets, which are not false prophets, but they may be operating in certain carnal nature, meaning that they can even prophesy in the name of Jesus and not go to heaven, according to Matthew 7. But when we talk about operating under demonic spirits, and if someone points towards Jesus, it's not clairvoyancy. The devil would suddenly point you away from Jesus if he is using someone to operate in clairvoyance. But if everything they say and do points towards the cross and the sacrifice Jesus made on that cross, that Jesus is the only way to heaven, that he died for our sin and he resurrected for us to have eternal salvation, if these things are being pointed at by someone ministering and performing signs and wonders, then that is of God. The devil will never preach Jesus Christ crucified and resurrected. Take note, the devil will not preach Jesus Christ crucified and resurrected. He will not point people towards Jesus. He will take them away from Jesus. So if someone is performing signs and wonders and the fruits you are seeing is pointing people towards Jesus, then you have to trust the fruit and you have to trust, you have to trust the Bible. You have to trust what you're seeing, the fruit, and then you have to trust if Jesus is the one taking all the glory. Praise God. And before I go, I want to say a quick prayer for you. If you're here today and you have been in a place where they did open the third eye or you've been experiencing some of the symptoms and signs that this article that I quoted was uh, talking about or you're just feeling icky or you're having these kind of feelings and fears that oh man something has happened I've been exposed I've been contaminated spiritually I want to pray with you right now in the mighty name of Jesus right now I want you to place your hand on your own head in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I break every spirit of divination over the people of God right now Every spirit of false prophecy, I break you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of confusion, clairvoyancy, divination and witchcraft be broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command every spirit of, of uh, false religion, every spirit of opening of the third eye, to be broken in the name of Jesus. Every unbiblical, unsanctioned practice that caused open doors to demons be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Unsanctioned practices, unbiblical practices are big open doors for evil spirits. Right now, I break every power of darkness that has been a given entry through the opening of third eye, through other unsanctioned practices, be broken today in Jesus' mighty name. Every spirit of Kundalini, I cast you out. Every spirit of false religion, I cast you out right now. Be broken over the people of God right now in Jesus' mighty name. By the authority in the name of Jesus, I declare you free. Be free today in Jesus' name. Be free today in Jesus' name. I close every third eye. I close every demonic gate, every false teaching and doctrine. Be broken today in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Be free. Be free. Be free by the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you and see you soon again.